What's up everyone, this is Dustin with Dusty Trails Workshop, and today I'm gonna tell you the tale of a project of, I can make that. So through social media, I found someone that actually wanted to make a dream project of mine. So this was actually within the Etsy marketplace where people laser engrave this onto their boards, but I actually wanted to do CNC inlays, but I decided to add my own twist to it. Within this board, the backdrop, the main part of this board is gonna be made from black walnut. Inlays are going to be from four different species, wenge, paduk, maple, and cherry. And then from that black walnut slab, I'm going to carve out the pockets where these inlays are going to set into. At the end of this video, I'll add a bookmark for those people that are actually interested in the V-card tutorial on the how-to on inlays. So to kickstart this project, this is where I came home from the lumber store and started milling. All right, so diving into it here. The species that I'll be using here are cherry, maple, wenge, black walnut, and to top it off, some paduk. So with these six species, I'll incorporate them into this cutting board. So coming off the shelf from the lumber yard, I took off the edges and cleaned them up a bit. After that, I just roughly cut these planks in half. Since I only have a table saw here, to clean up my edges properly, I find that cutting them down lengthwise into smaller segments works easier when trying to find one side that has a straighter edge. Then I'll cut off one edge and then I'll flip it around, meaning I'll rotate end to end and then I'll cut it on the other side just to square up each edge. And then from those two rotated cuts, I'll actually turn the board so that side that you just cut faces the fence now and then sits on a straighter edge and then I take off that other rough edge that you initially started with up against the fence. When it comes to clamping, I just always try to keep lateral and horizontal pressure at all times. After I cleaned up my first initial glue up, I chopped them all down. They're roughly two inches. I'll be honest, I, re I didn't really need them all to be two inches, but I use this as a method just in case I ever have to make a glue up down the road. Ever have one of those monotonous tasks where you create a silly song to help you through it? Dusty's mid shop song. Chop 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 sang glue sang glue clamp sang glue clamp sang glue sang glue clamp. All jokes aside and getting back into it, thus completing the second glue up of this project now that my end grain is exposed, I'll throw it on some double sided tape just because they're a little bit small and run them through my thickness planer. And if only, just like that, I have clean glue joints. These are going to make up some of my inlays for this cutting board. These next upcoming visual graphics just give you a rough idea of the plug and size orientation. Here you start to really see how many glue ups and the amount of time it took to make this cutting board. This was definitely out of my comfort zone. But I'll be honest, I lost about a day's worth of footage during this process, so you don't get to see the background of this cutting board come together, but you get the rough idea. I at least got one picture of the end result. Looking back, I wish I would have put these, put the center stripe on the ends and alternated that staggered pattern. To speed up the video, we're going to get into the smooth carve section. These are all just my plugs. This one here is going to be the outline. The species here I used was maple, and I went about... 0.25 depth in my cut for the end mill and it cleaned it up with the 1 16th bit. Moving and grooving on to the Paduk plug. This was my mirrored image of my shark text. I did a rough clearing path with my quarter inch end mill bit. Like I stated before, it's a bit excessive with how thick I made these plugs. I oversized them, but still I'm remaining on all my plugs being just under 0.25. Now on the bigger end of the spectrum, these were my text and shark plugs. Here again, I just did my quarter inch end mill roughing cleanup and then followed up with my 1 16th ball nose bit. This is obviously sped up footage. I wish my 1 infinity could carve that fast, but with that being said, I still thoroughly love my 1 infinity CNC machine. After I carved out my text plugs, I am moving on to the center mass shark 
And here again, yep, you guessed it. It's going to be a quarter inch end mill with a 1 16th ball nose cleanup. And now I'll cue the music so you can enjoy tunes and carving.
Alrighty, getting back into it, we have the center of the teeth from the cherry and those outlines I talked about before from the maple. Getting into the blanks, that is my text and my shark from the Wenge. A little bit of sharky shark action along with the charcuterie text. Cue the Jaws music. As followed with the Paduk shark text the center of my teeth made from cherry using the flick strategy to cut away the teeth here <laughs> if only right stacking up all the teeth and setting them aside this bad boy here is the background from that dark walnut along with the outlines from that maple. Getting started with these pockets here, I'm going to start with the outline of the teeth. Here was my actual 0.25 depth of cut where there's actually going to be technically speaking 0 0.02 difference for that wood movement and the glue to sit in from the pockets to the plugs. Moving into it, this is the rough clear of the shark with my quarter inch end mill and also my 1 16th ball nose bit. Sending you back into the carve and tune section of this video. But realistically, we'd be playing Jaws.
Hey, we're back. I was hoping for a good jump scare there. Uh, you know, really playing to that, really playing to that shark vibe. Uh, now that we have our plugs and pockets all carved out, it's time to use some imagination and put them into place. The coochie, the hoochie coochie. Because not everyone can have one. And smacking in the shark bow tie. Time to roll out the tight bond. Here I just like to use a glue brush. Make sure I'm in the voids. And get the glue nice and deep black. <clears throat> if you had a sharp eye there, you caught one of my errors. So let's talk about how this cutting board developed its own name, Scar after this quick glue montage. We can chalk this up to user error. As you can see, I still have to clean off this plug. So I also have to clean up Mr. Shark here. But over here, I just didn't get the perfect inlays with my teeth. Uh, I didn't like the gaps. I had a little bit of movement during my glue up. This really made me win the gold medal for the most fuck ups I had on a board. That being said, unfortunately, as much as I don't ever want to put epoxy into a cutting board, I'll jump on the trend for this time. It's a small percentage of the board. That's a hot topic, I know, but it was a faster option I have at the current time. If you notice here, I had a slight hiccup on my measurements. So I had to recarve out this tooth on both my pocket and my plug inverse. Now here is where it began to go downhill. I was manually moving my router back and forth to remove the positive end of these plugs. I was moving a groove into the shop music and rocked out a little bit too hard. And instead of moving my X axis over, I accidentally hit the button to move plus five down on the Z axis. My heart sank. I did a few double takes with the finger on the monitor, back over to the router, back over to the big red button, but by then it was a little too late. Now the only two things that saved my rear end was I still needed to shave off about a quarter of an inch from that Paduk plug. My point is that the Paduk plug took the force of the router plunging straight down five inches into the z-axis. Along with it just falling slightly outside of the makeup frame of that letter A. To solve this, I took one of those two inch extra pieces that I talked about earlier in the video and made my own plug for it. This worked in my favor here since it only went straight down and it didn't completely go through the board. In this case, the shank size is a quarter inch. Then in your carve software of your choice, draw a circle that size. I also made one slightly smaller. 0.2455 to be exact. Next, I told it to run a profile pass around the outside of that round vector that you just created. This way, I have two options on a snug fit and one that allows for the glue void. Now that I covered an error when you plunge straight down in your cutting board or whatever piece you're working with, I'll also mention that it definitely got the name Scar for a reason. So for this one, I also forgot to reset my Z depth after changing out bits, which I'm sure if you've used a CNC before, you know where this is going. So that being said, um, after I swapped out the bit and after I had changed out my bit to one depth, I reset the depth and forgot to set it again. It started to carve. I at least managed to hit the red button this time. I at least saved mass damage, but I did plunge straight down and across on a perfect diagonal. For this, I applied what I just talked about previously. I used my digital calipers <clears throat> out to measure the gap from one end to the other, and for lack of better ways to describe it, the worm. Now, all I did was find out how much it moved from its initial plunge from one end to the other and made a diagonal plug for it. And also knowing that, again, it was the type of router bit, so you have to apply it. In this case, it was my 1 8 end mill bit. So all I had to do was make a 1 8 vector for it. I'll let you guys play Where's Waldo for that one. Oh, and by the way, I also had a huge weather change. I started this board in New York, October, so warm 60-ish. But by the time from when I first started and by the end of that final week, it was about 20 degrees. So yeah, I definitely also experienced wood movement. Initially starting this project, I had 
the cutting board. Initially starting off, I put that black walnut cutting board on my CNC and leveled it to the spoil board after coming out after coming out of my thickness planer, but since my final glue up made it over 12 inches, I couldn't do that final pass on a thickness planer, so I leveled it out. So with this long winded point, I found out that the right corner curled up on me and it was about 0.2. And yeah, when I was doing the final part of the carve, which was putting the gum, the Wengay gum, <laughs> Wengay gum, uh, <laughs> sounds really good, side of the cutting board, I wound up finding out that that difference was made up from one end to the other end of the cutting board. So, uh, yeah, accidents happened. Uh, I was in five feet of muck-ups, and, uh, and it all just happened at the end, and there was just a lot of yelling and screaming and um, imagining me just not having a good time. We'll put it that way. <laughs> Anywho, uh, getting back into it, uh, I did a rough sand. I send it up to 120 water popping with each grit change. Then you guys know me as well. I like my quarter inch roundovers. And then just cleaning up the mess here and, and showing you the final product. And then this is after one coat of oil. And now I'm going to apply the feet here. Uh, I like to use a V bit and then just mark my center and use that to kind of guide when I come back and install the feet and here I usually just drive with a handheld screwdriver making sure all of them are nice and snug I like to spin them just to make sure I'm tight enough so before putting thread lock in there, I'll make sure it's tight all the way down. And that's not quite yet. But bang, I got it now. Anyway, so that's just a temporary fit. I'm just making sure everything's kosher. And then I'll take them off and give it a good old wax. All right, ladies and gents. It's sanded, it's oiled, it's waxed, it's all done. Here you go. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know by throwing a like or a comment in there. And just a rough idea on that CAD first draft I sent to the customer, the final result, and the hiccups. And if this is where you're parting ways, cheers, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next trail. Welcome into the V-Carve tutorial. Here is just the beginning of the cutting board design. Um, the makeup and the text was really just taken from the idea, that concept that I talked about earlier from the Etsy marketplace. You all can find that in your own time. Just the shark charcuterie board is all you really need to search in for Etsy to see where I got this idea from. But let's get into it. So I got the vectors from the shark off Etsy marketplace and I had to tweak it a little bit to make it better. So that's kind of the origin story here. And I did kind of like the concept of like the, the logo shark being chewed apart, but I was kind of worried about that in the long run with the vectors since I already experienced it with the shark, as you can see. Getting into the cleanup of the shark here, the lines aren't quite as perfect as I needed it to be. So smoothing out all these points on these vectors here, I'm really just cleaning up the lines and making them look a little bit smoother. Here I'm just cleaning up the shark fins and making them look a little bit cleaner and more pronounced and getting all those tight corners here and just rounding them off and making them look more appealing. Here as you can see in the rendering, uh, I still need to fix the eye here 
and some of these teeth and around the nose here because the toolpath as you can see where it's highlighting in blue isn't quite carving it out right as you can see in those gaps where my mouse pointer is um, those are clean but it's not going into these small tight vectors in the main body I guess it would be the gills of the shark they're just small and not pronounced enough and as you can see here in the teeth the toolpath isn't actually carving out these teeth it's just going around here I noticed I have to edit the teeth there's a lot of gaps and voids where my toolpath isn't clearing out where it should be so here I'm just gonna move over the teeth roughly to where I think it might carve out quickly hit recalculate re-render the board and all the cars look at the teeth and now I see that there's a true gap and they're not molded together like the other teeth are so here I think I got it about where I need it to be so I'm just gonna double check with my measuring tape as you can still see there's still not a full carve within there like it is on the bottom of the screen but I'm just gonna take my measuring device here like I said come out notice that it's 0 0.045 readjust all the teeth to roughly about that again I'm going to re-render all this find out that I still need to move over these teeth adjust them accordingly now here's where I started to notice I was going off track with the teeth and that inside of the mouth so what I did here was take the offset to 0.05 this way I have a guideline and my teeth will line up within the inside vector of this mouth and it won't get all catawampus. So now I'm going to readjust all my teeth to that profile of the line just so the bottom of the teeth skids across that offset that I had created. Here I'm just moving the teeth over manually, <clears throat> manually recalculating, testing again and again and I think I'm finally starting to get the voids that I want in between each of these teeth as you see here looking at it here there's a little bit more design that's lacking in the rendering so I'm gonna go ahead and open these up a little bit more so the toolpath can clear out in there quick tip here I have four teeth that I want to make bigger so I'm gonna highlight them real quick click on move selection hold shift and that way it will drag them out evenly to the size I find appropriate. The reason for doing this is I noticed, well, in the rendering, the teeth that are this small are actually just way, way, way too small. So this is how I altered the teeth to make them slightly bigger and more pronounced. The way these teeth will be more pronounced in the given toolpath. So here, now I'm getting into it, um, I'm just recalculating here, I'm starting to have the shark come along and with opening up the vectors, moving and dragging these teeth around, you can see that now I have voids, there's definition within the teeth, the gaps are there. So I'm just going to quickly drag over my shark, um, unhighlight un the cutout for the handle double check that I recalculated alter the cut depth and then just make it a wonky color so it's more pronounced so you can see it here and now here you can see the highlighted selection everything that's shown in green is going to be in my quarter inch end mill everything in blue is going to be that 1 16th ball nose and here if I drag it around and look at it you can see that the voids are clean and there's no green showing through now that the shark is done we're gonna get into the teeth on the side so there's a lot going on here the inside of this tooth has a lot of definition I originally wanted something like this I'm just gonna snip over these rounded over corners here and then just tweak them to my liking the point here is I'm going to try to accentuate in a way um, a more defined tooth and have that drag out to be a little bit more pronounced uh, as you can see from the top tooth to the bottom tooth I'll render it here real quick 
you get a little bit more definition in the backdrop. In this case, it would be the walnut that I'm going to use as my backdrop of the cutting board. So here I'm just going to go ahead and this is actually going to work out to be my Wengate gum off the side. I'm just going to unite this real quick, drag these vectors, clean them up. Once I get the gum established, I'm going to offset it by 0 0.06. The reasoning you'll see later on, but here, now I'm just taking that offset and using my cut tool here, and then just making clean roundovers and cleaning up the outside vectors of this tooth, which will be labeled as a maple outlines from the video. So just tweaking these a little bit, making them look a little bit cleaner and more pronounced. That way I have an outline tool path for said maple outline. Whew. All right, so the final rendering of this cutting board. Shark is clean, the teeth are cleaned up on either end. The text is good. You have to do a little bit of imagination with the end grain result in a cutting board, but I think you guys get the idea here. So overall, the thickness of my cutting board is going to be about one and a half, but all my cuts are going to be at two just when I run them through my thickness planner, cleaning up any surfaces. I'll have a little bit of leniency and play room uh, later on down the road. All right, so deep diving into all the tool paths needed for this carve, just give you a rough idea in case you're ever doing multiple inlays. So here's some of the artwork that I took off the interwebs um, and then getting into my tool paths here. I usually like to color my tool paths just so I get an idea later on down the road and just give to my customers what it's going to look like. So now when it comes into that last tool path that I have the gum, I basically wanted it to be the actual 1.5. So looking at this board from the side, you see that that one Wingate gum insert will technically be one. 1.5 but to get it to render I did it slightly under these tool paths just to give me an idea of how deep a tool path will actually be um, looking at it here so these are all the pockets that are needed so let's talk about the plugs that are actually going to go inside these pockets uh, let me just open that up real quick here all right so here is going to be all my plugs um, make sure that you mirror all your images I'll talk about that in a little bit but um, these are the rough tool paths needed for this particular design. Here I like to highlight all my tool paths just to make sure they're all gonna be cleaned up. So that's why I have such bright colors in there. They were to mimic other tool paths or just to make sure that they would be true vectors. So to properly show you the plugs here, I'm gonna select the proper tool paths. So here I have my outlines, one item text, two different tool paths here, same thing with this, my shark text, my gum insert, the outline, the middle of my teeth from that cherry, and my shark vector. So now let's go ahead and preview the selected tool paths. And the renderings are as followed here. And there's a proper showing of all my plugs here. Now let's actually get into the mirror part of plugs. So technically speaking, you're gonna take your, your vectors here. In this case, it's the shark. Make sure you don't get the bitmap image here. I'm going to select the mirror and then I'm going to flip it horizontally. When you take your pocket, it's actually going to fit inside and be a mirrored re inverse image of the item that you're trying to create. In the cap off the tutorial, I'll just show you all my proper tool paths, depth of cut, speeds, feeds and speeds, and anything else that you might have questions on when it comes to inlays and how I did them for this particular project. Now I'm no expert when it comes to pocket inlays, um, but the YouTubers out there say that you have to leave a gap of 0 0.02 for wood movement and that void for the glue. So that being said, the pockets that you wanna make, in this case, it was 0.25. That's gonna be the max depth where my end mill and my ball nose bits 
are going to carve two. On the inverse, on the plugs, you want to go slightly below that. In this case, minus 0 0.02. So whatever your number is, in this case it's 0.25 minus 0 0.02, and make that your depth of cut for your plug. And as you see here for all my plugs, I square them off or make a vector around the outside edges, and then I'll select V-carve, at least for this particular program that I've run. That way it does the inverse, and as long as you selected mirror, it's going to carve the inverse selection of what you're trying to do. All right. Whew, that was a doozy. Uh, I'm definitely tuckered out from all the woodworking involved in that, and um, drawing it all up, and putting it in a video format, losing footage, dealing with the dilemmas that I had, and uh, finally all composing it and putting it together. Uh, <laughs> that was a job and a half, to say the least. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, hopefully I gave you everything that you wanted in the video. If not, hey, let me know. Um, I, I got to build on this too. Uh, I want to get better. So any critiques or something you didn't like or I missed, let me know. Heck, did I do a good job? Let me know. Anyways, enjoy with what you got left in the day. Catch you on the next trail. Adios. Au revoir.